So this is West Norwood Cemetery and it's actually one of the Magnificent Seven. That's an informal term that's applied to seven large private cemeteries in London. So to be honest with you guys, I have a real resistance and probably a fear of anything to do with death and graveyards and I normally avoid them like the plague. But this one was just so beautiful. We actually came down to look at the Greek necropolis because my friend wanted to see it. And I was really blown away by the beauty in this cemetery. There were also some really unusual graves here, like this little wooden cross with no name. You really wonder what the story behind this grave is and the person that lies here. West Norwood Cemetery is the home of some of the best preserved Gothic mausoleums in the city and it actually looks a lot like a Victorian horror novel when you walk around. It's definitely got that feel about it. So the Magnificent Seven refers to seven major cemeteries that were built in the Victorian era in direct response to the growing number of people now living in London. And what comes along with that is the growing number of people that are dying that need a place to rest. So the other six cemeteries are Abney Park, Highgate, Kensal Green, Nunhead, Brompton and Tower Hamlets. The construction of these cemeteries began in 1836 and at this time the graveyards of London were just simply overflowing and the small churches just couldn't keep up. So we have to remember that back in the Victorian time diseases were rife and there were even reports of bodies contaminating the water supply because the churches were just simply overflowing and they couldn't keep up with it. So they commissioned these seven cemeteries and they went up very quickly. So they began in 1836 and by 1837, West Norwood was consecrated and ready for use. So there was quite a bit of land to choose from back in the day. And this was originally part of the Great North Wood, which was an ancient and now all but lost woodland that stretched between Croydon and Camberwell. And actually, when they did a survey in 2005 of some of the trees in the cemetery, they discovered that there was one oak that had been there since between 1540 and 1640, which would actually make it one of the original Great Northwood trees. As you can see, it really highlights the passage of time, as a lot of these gravestones have been moved by the tree roots and things have fallen over, things have shifted. And it really just shows that nothing is permanent and everything is impermanent. And here's a cute little squirrel just hanging out. So its design was intended to be the UK's first Gothic cemetery. And this style was very trendy at the time, the Victorian Gothic era. This led many wealthy people to want to be buried here and building these fantastic, huge, grand Gothic mausoleums, which will, you will see dotted around this cemetery all over the place. And there's actually 70 grade two listed structures on this ground. So this was my favourite gravestone of all of them. I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous, this woman rising out of the ground. And this is definitely one of the most unusual graves I've seen, this huge boulder. Uh, it's the grave of Charles Vine Hollybone and Sarah Elizabeth Ware's Hollybone. I tried to search a little bit about them and I couldn't really find anything. There's even a Greek necropolis and this was because they bought a whole section of the cemetery for the Greek Orthodox Christian burials in 1842. And you'll see that they've taken a lot of inspiration from ancient Greece. The cemetery is considered to be a site of national historic and cultural interest, although you can't be buried there any longer. So this area is actually having quite a lot of restoration at the moment and the main centrepiece was actually boarded off when we came, unfortunately, as you can see here. And it's because a lot of the graves are in serious decline and decay and so they're actually doing quite a bit of renovation right now. There have actually been reports that it's become so bad that people can see limbs outside of the grave. So a lot of them have been boarded off and there's been a huge budget given to the project of restoring these back to their former glory. My favourites in this section though were the slightly smaller but very unique mosaic graves. Here's one of them which I just thought was absolutely beautiful and then this one which is a little bit worn at the bottom but how unique are they? If you 
can see this mausoleum with the cross on just in the background here so this is one of the most beautiful ones in here and it's that of the Vagliano brothers I hope I've pronounced that right amongst other major works they funded the National Library of Greece in the late 19th century and the monument is actually a copy of the Tower of the Winds which was erected in Athens in around 150 BC. This one is in serious need of restoration as well and it is said that the pigeon droppings inside are up to 70 centimeters high so you can actually see inside of some of them and even though this one's really old you can see that it's actually still in pretty good condition with even the sheets still over the coffins and the wreaths 